Hello, my friends. Pearl of Wisdom here from BPAL Picks and uh, the Pearl of Wisdom Show. Today, I'm going to be looking at betting for NHL futures. Yes, that's right. NHL season isn't too far away. Are you all happy in the land? I'm happy in the land. I'm like full of the frolic, I'll tell you right now. And we're going to be looking at the Carolina Hurricanes on FanDuel. They have their season points uh, up now. And I like to guess what every team is going to get. I don't play them all, like, actually on my betting site, which is peepalpicks.com. Uh, comment in the comment section. I'll give you a link, and you can get in there for free for a month right now. But I do do some of them, but I do all of them for these videos. So let's take a look at it, shall we? Carolina Hurricanes, minus 118 for over 104.5, and minus 108 for under 104.5. We'll look at uh, what they got last year. Carolina was 113 points. So we got to ask ourselves, are they going to drop 104.5? 104.5 points. Now, there's a few things before we get in here that you have to take into account. The East has gotten stronger this year. So I think, you know, it's going to be tough for teams in the East, I believe, to be able to beat their old, their last year's point projections. But let's take a look at Carolina and see if maybe they might do such a thing. We're going to look analytically at the players. They added Michael Bunting, who um, had a down year defensively last year, as did pretty much every Toronto Maple Leaf, because they play poor defensively. Uh, Sheldon Keefe is a poor coach, as far as I'm concerned. And um, so let's take a look. at. I look at Jay Fresh. Jay Fresh, it's the best there. I said it. Uh, he is one of my favorite uh, analytics guys in the land. I use more than him, but for the sake of the video, we'll use him here. Even strength defense, 30%. As you can see, this, this line shows the even strength uh, defense for the last three years. Every dot gives you an indication of where he was. He used to be practically elite two years ago. Goes to Toronto, sucks really sucks. Not bad, 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 considering he has 84% offense, but not great. Do I think he's going to rebound? I think so. But the thing is, he is going to be playing higher in the lineup than um, he normally would be, although he did play high in the lineup in Toronto. He does get less minutes because of his size. I think he's going to improve defensively here in Carolina, and I think it was a good pickup. Honestly, trading Bunting, letting Bunting go and picking up Bertuzzi for more money to me is a waste of money. I'll just say that right now. Uh, other, I don't need to show you Ajo's analytics. They're pretty fantastic, although he's a little overrated defensively. Um, the people put him in Selkie contention and stuff like that. I wouldn't put him there, but he is very, very good. Um, Seth Jarvis is also... Un is underrated defensively. In fact, I'll even go as far as to take a look at his, just because most so most most people just see him for his offense. But actually, Seth Jarvis is 82% even strength defense, um, and his offense, like I said, is very well. It is very good. His projected WAR is 62%. I think that's mostly because there hasn't been a lot of. Uh, time yet to see if he's going to be able to keep up with a lot of the numbers that he has here um so it's in a, it's a short window um and to a time span to be able to get the data to put him higher i would put it higher myself if you look at the numbers here um I, and i think maybe another reason why is as you can see his finishing is very low he he gets a fair amount of goals per 60 but he gets a lot of chances that he doesn't capitalize on. So that puts his finishing down a little lower. I still think he's higher than that. I love him. Um, and he was with them last year. 
You got Svechnikov coming back into the game. I think Svechnikov, it's time for him to make a move in the direction that we all think he should be able to go, go to. Um, he's He's been good, but this guy has the tools to be better than good. Whoops, wrong Svechnikov, sorry. This, he has the tools to be better than just good. And honestly, he really has just been good as of late. Of course, his offense is fantastic. Um, he improved in, in significantly defensively last year, but before that, he was still low. But he was young, 21-22, and then he improved. I think this is a year that he could just go through the roof. Um, if, as long as he comes back from his injury, all right. And you putting this all into perspective from what I'm saying here, this team is absolutely stacked. Kokaniemi is underrated defensively. Nietzsche, honestly, if there was a guy to move for a center, if Kokaniemi can't take the reins, Nietzsche would be the guy for me, but I don't know if they'll have to because I really like Kokaniemi. Um, then when you get down to the lower lines, Jordan Stahl is, I don't even know, most people believe he's a very solid defensive defenseman, and you would be right. Analytically, he is a very solid defensive defenseman, or centerman, I should say. And Jesper, Jesper Fast also. The, almost every single player on this team is solid defensively. Once you get down to the fourth line, it starts to get a little bit, eh, Tuvo's coming back from an injury. He hasn't been at his best the last little while. Hopefully he can come back. And, I mean, that's the reason why I think Marty Nietzsche could be moved because he, he could bring possibly be a piece that could, with other pieces, could bring back a, a top-line center and Tara Vining could move up into that second spot. But you're looking at a better a better player in bunting than, than left. Um, that was supposed to be Pacioretty. You've got Aho Jarvis. Jarvis is just getting better. Kokaniemi is getting better. All of their players have an opportunity to get better. And then you add Dmitry Orloff, who um, also had a down year defensively last year. Let's look at him. Uh, uh, mostly because he was in Washington, I would say, but he's not really the most, he's not really a defensive guy, but wasn't bad. 64% even strength defense. That's pretty good. And that wasn't that much of a drop. He is a fantastic pickup for this team. And when you look at the whole team in general, Brent Burns actually better defensively than people give him credit for. I want to show that one too. People do not give this guy, and he's not great defensively, but he, people think he doesn't play defense at all. And that's just not true. He had a 41% even strength defense, and that is consistent for the last three years. At, when you have a 93% offense dri drive, being able to drive the offense, and you're around 41% defensively, it's not too shabby. It's kind of no wonder, apparently, he had some difficulties with Carlson the year before. And this is probably why, because Carlson really, really is stinky defensively. But I think Brent Burns doesn't get the credit that he deserves. And I'm not surprised that Carolina realizes that because they're an analytics-based team and they know what they're getting. Um, Brady Shea and Brett Pesci. Brett Pesci is a guy that everybody, uh, most people I hear say, oh, he's just a stud defensively. Actually, not so much. <laughs> he's okay. See, he's actually last year had worse defensive analytics than Burns, if you can believe that, um, and almost better offense. He's actually more of an offensive guy who's really good on the PK, and that's why people think he's so great defensively. Being five-on-five five defense and PK defense are two different things, two different disciplines. You Just because you're a good PK guy does not mean you're going to be a good five-on-five five guy because five-on-five five defensively means playing all over the ice defensively you, you're, and still producing offense at the same time. So he actually kind of struggles with that the last two years. And I'm not really sure why. Um, possibly because he was playing, not playing with Slavin anymore. And that leads us to Slavin. He's an absolute beast. But 
of course. You got you, and I don't think he's gonna be playing down here. He'll probably go back with Burns again. Um, tough to say. Orloff with Pesci, but maybe they will play him with D'Angelo because D'Angelo is asked. He basically is zero defensively at all. I would rather Jalen Chatfield be in there. But all of this being said, this team is unbelievably, this is probably the best defense in the league. No doubt about it. Plus you're getting, and then you're getting Frederick Anderson and Antti Ranta back. With the additions, injuries coming back, I'm going over 104.5, 104.5 points for the season at minus 118. Come to BPAL Picks to see all the fine frolic. Have a great day, everybody.